for some reason, Photoshop keeps some really, really good algorithms for color correcting hidden. I have a terrible, terrible picture of a food truck, but I love it because it gets to sh display the power of this algorithm that I'm going to show you guys. So when you create a new curves adjustment layer, you can obviously change the tonality of the image, and you can change the different channels to add or subtract colors and do all kinds of fun stuff. Adobe, at some point, decided to add um, the auto color correction options so that you could um, automatically color correct an image. So when you click on the auto button, it's supposed to automatically color correct the image. So I'll click on that, and as you can see, it works great. <laughs> no, not really. That's because it uses an algorithm that, in my opinion, is not the best algorithm to use to color correct images. If you want to change the algorithm, all you have to do is hold on the Option key on a Mac, uh, Alt key on Windows, and click on that Auto button. And that brings up a window that shows you the four different algorithms that you can select. By default, Photoshop selects enha uh, Enhance Brightness and Contrast. Enhance Brightness and Contrast, in my opinion, is not the best one. The one that I prefer using is called Fine, Dark, and Light Colors. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. So when you click on Select um, fine, and dar uh, fine, Dark, and Light Colors, it obviously does a much better job. Uh, I also think that checking this box, Snap Neutral Midtones, makes the image look even better. So that's the algorithm that I like to set my Photoshop to so that when I click on the Auto button, this happens. And you can change the algorithm uh, from now on by simply clicking on Save as Defaults. When you check on that box and I press OK, the next time that I create a Curves Adjustment layer, oops, sorry about that, uh, missed the button there, on Auto, it applies that color effect. Now, I just want to take just a couple minutes explaining what Photoshop is doing behind the scenes, because even though I'm a big, big fan of automating Photoshop and letting it do the work for you, I always want to know what Photoshop is doing in case it makes a mistake and I need to manually adjust it. So I'm going to reset this uh, curves adjustment layer, so I'm going to click on this icon, so it resets that layer. So remember what the algorithm was called? It was called Fine, Dark, and Light Colors, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find the light and dark colors. So what does that mean? Um, for some of you who have been using Photoshop for a while, you might remember this technique, actually. This is how we used to color correct images way, way, way before we had all these fancy algorithms. And what we would do is we would go to each individual channel. So we, we have the red channel, which is the one I just selected, red channel. And this is the light color here, the bright, the white uh, point. And I can click and drag that until I find the information. So you can see the histogram there. To the right of where I, I put the point, there's no information there. So, there, there, so what I need to do is bring that in until I find the information. On the black point, I don't really need to move it because right on the edge where it is, we already have information. And I can do that with the green channel as well. Find the white point, find the black point, then with the blue channel, find the point. So more or less, that's what Photoshop is doing behind the scenes, but it does it automatically so you don't have to fine tune and tinker with that. Now, as magical as it may seem, is not perfect. So let me show you what happens when it doesn't work. Um, I think it's this one. Yes. So if I apply a curves adjustment layer and then hit the auto button, it doesn't work. So what I recommend doing is when this happens, when you apply the algorithm and it doesn't work, do one extra step. And the extra step is to click on the eyedropper tool, uh, on the midpoint eyedropper tool, or the gray point eyedropper tool, this one here, and then click on anything on the image that you think should be a neutral gray. So if the person is wearing like a gray shirt or the gray bricks on the ground there, something that should be a gray without a color cast, um, click on that and see if that works. So I'll click on the bricks, and in this case, that worked. Some of you may be thinking, well, why just not start with a gray point eyedropper? And we can certainly try that, and I'll click on that same point, um, and you'll see what happens. If I just click on that same point, it removes the color cast, but the image looks washed out. So 
I like starting with auto because we'll get the contrast for sure. In some cases, we'll get the color as well. If we don't get the color, all we need to do is click on the gray point eyedropper and click on anything on the image that you think should be a neutral gray. And sometimes it's just trial and error. Just look for something that should be gray on the image.